everybody. Welcome to this week's weekly roundup. I have a shorter list than normal, so uh, let's start with the big one from this week. I am so grateful to be able to report that the demolition of the home at 100 Western Avenue is complete. Um, the site has been, you know, graded and leveled. Next week, hopefully, if the rain lets up, we'll get in and do some seeding and, and mulching so that grass can grow. Um, but it has been, you know, a long time coming, I know, for the entire community. And I did share that with the family and the friends that were gathered um, at the site this week that the whole community has shown so much concern and compassion um, and inquiry about the status of this home. And I really think that's a testament to who we are as a community. And I don't know that we take the time to acknowledge that enough, you know, that we are a community that's small enough to really still care about one another. Uh, but big enough to meet, you know, amenities and accommodations that people need too. So um, it was an emotional day, and I am so incredibly proud of our city crews um, who just did a tremendous job, and our whole team at the city. Every department played uh, a piece of this uh, puzzle, and I'm just so grateful that we've had the opportunity to serve our community and, and the family and friends um, of the family impacted in this tremendous way. So next stop is, uh, assuming it gets approved in the 2024 budget, we'll do redesign so we'll do the design for that intersection um, so we won't see much movement on the site actually we probably won't see any movement on the site in 2024 but the next kind of milestone will be probably late summerish where we'll have that design come back um, so i'll provide an update at that time another big one this week is uh, the finance committee has been debating for many 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 hours uh, the budget that i presented to them um, so they completed that process last night. So our budget uh, that will come out of the Finance Committee will now get published. So a draft budget will get published for everyone to review and ask questions about. Um, and then we'll have our budget public hearing. So that's on, I think, November 7th. Uh, obviously, virtual and in-person is always an option for us. And it, it's that time. You know, if you have questions or thoughts on how the city resources should be used, this is the moment to do it, uh, or moments. We've had a lot of opportunities along the way. Um, but you'll see that draft budget posted online, I think, by the beginning of November. A um, couple of other things. So fire prevention was this week, but really kind of fire prevention goes, I think, the entire month of October. But I will say our um, media and comms team, who's standing behind the camera, has done a tremendous job of sharing a lot of good tips. And I know the fire department obviously was instrumental in providing those too. So they're good reminders. You know, in prepping for this, I read a couple and I was like, oh, yeah. That makes good sense. So if you haven't, just check out um, the fire prevention reminders that we have up for this week. And then um, just continue to uh, practice good fire safety throughout the whole year, but in particular in this month of October. I know I have a mental note to talk to my kids about it when we get home. So it's just a chance to like touch base on those things that we don't think of happening very often, but um, unfortunately sometimes they do. So check out uh, our social media if you're looking for some tips on what to chat about. On Tuesday, October 25th, the police department is hosting a bartenders course. Um, so if you are interested or need to attend, you should just call or email the police department to reserve a spot. Um, this is the training that gives information for people who want to be licensed agents or bartenders. So this is a good chance to get in, get that uh, education that you need in order to be eligible. Switching a little bit to um, Sharp Corner, excuse me, actually, yeah, Sharp Corner Park and the square, we still need a couple of Christmas trees. So if you have trees you're willing to donate us, please reach out to the Park and Rec Department um, so that we can get the right amount of trees this year. We're going for more trees than we have in the past. We've got two downtown anchor um, event spaces that we want to make sure have really nice, beautiful, profound trees. And then we're also doing uh, a little bit different event at the square where we'll need some more normal sized trees as well. So if you have trees to give, please reach out to us. Next week at uh, the Common Council meeting, we're going to start to talk uh, even more about a potential or a planned rather annexation of some land. So in the early 2000s, um, there was an agreement between the town of Emmett officials at the time and the city of Watertown officials to incrementally um, annex in certain portions of the town of Emmett. I think this one that we're about to come up on is the fourth series of annexations in that plan that was laid out. I think there was four phases. Um, this next one is admittedly the biggest one. And so we've been spending some time over the last few months working with the town of Emmett officials, talking about uh, what this document requires both of us to do, uh, what changes, if we can make them, that we'd like to see made, um, and how this actually realistically gets implemented um, successfully and with the least amount of negative impact uh, to those residents as possible. 
and the smoothest transition into the city of Watertown as possible. So if you, this area that we're talking about really is right along the Highway 16 bypass. I think that's kind of the easiest way on the north side to articulate it. Kind of between like Water Street and just past, ooh, what would that be like, just past 2nd Street Road, kind of past the um, Janel Tire, not on that side of the highway, but on uh, the south side of the bypass. Um, so if you're interested or you live in that area, uh, next week at um, the Common Council meeting, we'll be having a discussion about that. So again, those are Tuesday, 7 o'clock, virtual or in person. Uh, on the bridge front, which I feel like I talk about bridges quite a bit lately, um, the Katy Street Bridge project is moving around, along really well. So we're hopeful that that one will actually get opened back up, weather permitting, of course, uh, a little bit ahead of schedule, so we're hopeful there. And then the downtown uh, Main Street Bridge continues to be difficult. <laughs> um, uh, we, you know, it's roadblock after roadblock on that bridge. Uh, we continue to do our best to try to push through those or overcome those. Uh, we should know more in a few weeks, but I just want people to know we're, as we never are, forgetting about that bridge. It is a chronic issue and discussion for us. We're just in a little bit of a difficult phase, which has happened before, um, and I'm hopeful we'll make our way out of this one as well, uh, but I'll provide an update in a couple weeks. Uh, great news. The holiday train is coming back. Uh, so the Canadian Pacific holiday train is coming back December 4th. I'm sure you'll see the information posted. I just shared it with everyone in our community who does all that wonderful advertising and organizing for us. Uh, this is always such a great event, so I'm really excited that we'll be able to kind of kick off our holiday season with the um, holiday train coming back. They obviously have a great concert. I know Watertown Tourism and our Park and Rec Department have done a great job of organizing some events like bonfires and hot chocolate, and I think there's also a food, a food drive. So we'll share more, but just watch for info on that. And then also announced this week was the uh, Holiday Parade of Lights. So that's the parade uh, that happens right after Thanksgiving. This is not a parade that's run by the city of Watertown. It's run by an incredible team of volunteers. If you're looking for information, it's Watertown Wisconsin Parades, I believe, on Facebook. So you can check them out and follow them there. And then we announced a new event this year at the square called Jingle Bell on the Rock. So look for Jingle Bell on the Rock on Facebook and um, like it so that you can get updates on that event. Before the holidays, we have some other events happening, and at the on the rec side, they are doing Halloween hoopla. So this is going to be dinner, music, dancing, a DJ, pumpkin decorating, crafts, and other fall fun. Uh, they're encouraging costumes to be worn. You register on rec desk. I think it's the Wednesday night before the public schools and perhaps all schools are closed for the Thursday, Friday in October. Uh, they're also right now doing Fall Leaf Bingo, which is where you go around to different parks and uh, areas of the city and look for particular leaves, which I always love those traveling bingo cards. Uh, we're also registering for youth wrestling, youth basketball, and then ballet and dance. And then on the um, older people front, it's cardio kickboxing, Zumba, men's basketball, and then bar fitness, and I think yoga as well. Um, I do want to just give a reminder, It's we're coming up really quickly on that time of year where we're going to close our neighborhood park bathrooms. So I think we leave a couple of parks that host leagues open, but in general, your neighborhood bathrooms are going to begin to get winterized and closed for the season. The library is supposed to be having a, a solar eclipse party tomorrow on Saturday. I don't know if the weather is going to cooperate with that, but I do know they're still going to uh, have activities. So they're going to, they've moved that event inside, so that's going to be in the Talk Read Play area that begins at 10 a.m. at the library. Other events, if you watch this video before 5 o'clock on Friday, you can still get Chick-fil-A at the Benson Family Town Square. Despite the pouring rain, there are still people lining up to get Chick-fil-A, so they'll be there till 5. Uh, I know there's a local business that's holding a fall festival party tonight. Um, Saturday is the Harvest Ball that's being held, I think, at Turner Hall. I know there's a Humane Society fundraiser happening. Um, and then on Sunday at the Square, we are hosting, well, not we are hosting, but the Square is hosting an event for uh, veterans and first responders support. So as I always say, Watertown Tourism is a complete list of details, a complete calendar of events for you to check out. Uh, there's no shortage of fun happening uh, in this community this weekend. So have a good weekend. We'll see you back next week.